Dr. Liao received his medical degree here at Stanford and then did his urologic training at UCLA and joined the faculty in 2006. He's now a professor of urology and he's currently the vice chair of academic affairs and director of research in our department. Dr. Liao maintains an active clinical practice at the VA, Palo Alto VA Medical Center, and he has been the chair, the chief of the urologic division of, of that uh, organization for the last 15 years, just recently passed that on to another faculty member. Um, in that role, he was responsible not only for the urologic care at the Palo Alto VA, but also at a bunch of outlying clinics, so it was a big job. Um, he has, throughout this, maintained a very active laboratory as well, but focused a little more on bioengineering, kind of between Dr. Brooks and Dr. Lea, Dr. San, I would say. Um, and he is really, part of his focus has been in bladder cancer. So we're going to shift focus now and, and talk uh, for a couple of uh, moments about bladder cancer. And he has been using both advanced imaging, using some of the engineering skills that he has, and you probably saw some examples of that, and also looking biologically at the urine. What sort of things can we discover in the urine that can actually tell us what's going on in somebody's bladder cancer? Um, so he's going to tell us a little bit about all that. Thank you, Dr. Liao. Thank you, Dr. Skinner, for that very kind introduction, and good evening. Um, over the next few minutes or so, I'd like to share with you the research in my lab on how we can try to improve bladder cancer treatment through augmented imaging and liquid biopsy. A little bit of background on the current paradigm for bladder cancer diagnosis and treatment. Patients typically present with blood in the urine or hematuria. That usually then leads to a consultation with a urologist in the, where in the office setting, we put an instrument called a cystoscope inside the bladder so we can inspect the lining of the bladder to see what the potential causes of the bleeding uh, is. If a tumor is found, then the patient goes to the operating room where we do a procedure called transurethral resection of bladder tumor, or TURBT, to remove the tumor. If the patient is found to have non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, and commonly a course of treatment called BCG, which is a topical treatment that we put inside of the bladder, is a form of a localized immunotherapy uh, and that's going to be followed by surveillance cystoscopy up to every three months because bladder cancer has a very high recurrence rate. If, however, patient is found to have muscle invasive bladder cancer, then the first line treatment is actually a course of chemotherapy followed by removal of the bladder, a procedure called radical cystectomy and the reconstruction of the urinary tract. As you can see, the treatment algorithm is quite complex. And at really every step of the way, accurate diagnostic information and staging is critical because all of these treatments carry a share of side effects and potential complications. So the focus of my lab is to address some of the major unmet needs in bladder cancer. We want to develop ability to see the cancer better. We want to develop ways that we can actually detect the cancer at the earliest stage non-invasively. What about when surgery, BCG, and chemotherapy fail? We want to actually develop new treatment. And not only just to develop new treatment, we need to actually develop ways that, that we can follow the treatment. Is it working or is it not working? Do we need to switch? Those are the things that's driving the research in my lab. On the right-hand side of your screen, you can see that bladder cancer comes in all shapes and sizes, and sometimes it's actually difficult to tell where the cancer is within the bladder. In fact, cystoscopy can miss clinically significant bladder cancer in up to 20, 30 percent of the time. And we know that TURBT may leave residual cancer behind. There are new technologies such as blue light cystoscopy which can help us see better. However, it's not widely available and is somewhat cumbersome to use. We believe the answer lies in artificial intelligence. And we're using state-of-art tools using through computer vision and machine learning to help us see the cancer better. We developed an algorithm called Sysonet for that purpose. And what we did in this study is that we took 100 patients with biopsy-proven bladder cancer, a type called papillary urethelial carcinoma, which is the most common type of bladder cancer. We put it in a training set and a test set, then apply it to another cohort patient, 50 or so, with and without bladder cancer. And for the first time, we were able to actually track these cancers dynamically and with really great performance status. Um, and 
we're just very much getting started. Now we're actually putting this in the operating room where we see how it can help the urologist in real time. What, what type of user, user interface do we need? We're developing a second generation of Cisna in which now we're amassing a large quantity of bladder images and videos from the full spectrum of bladder cancer as well as other cancer-mimicking benign diseases that are found in the bladder. And what we hope to do is to develop a predictive model that integrates me your medical record, your clinical history, imaging, and then biomarker information. And we believe urine is the answer there. Urine has long been recognized as a window into your health for thousands of years. It is now invasive it is abundant, it's easily accessible, and it's very amenable for longitudinal monitoring. And we believe it is really the ideal source in this era of precision medicine to follow bladder cancer. Um, using the, uh, these new strategies, what we're trying to do is we have now developed two different but complementary urine tests to detect the messenger RNA from the pellet of the urine and the cell-free DNA or tumor DNA from the supernatant part of the urine. Um, in this first test, what we did is develop a simple rapid urine test to detect a panel of three different biomarkers in urine using a two-hour PCR test. So this is a lot in the news recently. It's really very similar to the COVID test we've been all taking recently that, uh, uh, and it requires a couple of teaspoons of urine. What really makes me exciting about this research is that we can for the first time do what I call molecular triaging. That is, with the uh, um, small amount of urine, we can actually tell you, are you at high risk for bladder cancer or a low risk for bladder cancer? Uh, do you need to do a cystoscopy or can it be delayed or avoided altogether as opposed to somebody who needs to expedite a cystoscopy and TRBT? And in this recent study, uh, we, we found that you can actually obviate the need for cystoscopy in over 50% of the patients. In this next test, uh, what we're developing is a uh, ultra-sensitive way to detect urine tumor DNA that's found in urine. And this is done in collaboration with a colleague at Stanford, Max Dean. And what we're doing here is to do what is called targeted sequencing of a, parts of the uh, DNA that's uh, mutated in patients with bladder cancer that's shed into the urine. What's really exciting for me about this uh, assay is that it's ideally suited for treatment monitoring. So on your right, you can see a couple of uh, representative patients. On the top, this is a patient who's undergoing BCG treatment, that localized immunotherapy that I talked about. And the amount of urine tumor DNA perfectly correlated this patient's clinical status is that he had good response to BCG, has no recurrence. In contrast to the patient on the bottom, where clearly BCG is not working, recurrence is happening, and it's time to switch to a different type of therapy. And we have ongoing studies to apply this technology, not just in patients undergoing BCG, but also chemotherapy, as well as some of the newer systemic immunotherapy treatment options out there for bladder cancer. So this is sort of the grand vision. Our mission is to develop precision diagnosis to guide precision therapy of bladder cancer. We believe in early detection, risk assessment, and monitoring your treatment response through integration of state-of-art biomarkers, imaging, bioinformatics, and AI. And perhaps in the not-so-distant future, a patient at Stanford and elsewhere can get something like a personalized cancer dashboard in which we can plot out the different time points, overlay that with the biomarker assays that we're developing, and use that to guide the timing and the need for cystoscopy. And together with all the other data, your clinical history, your other risk factors, et cetera, to really develop a personalized predictive model for you, the patient. Lastly, I just want to thank the patients who participate in the research that we do, because without the patients, this is not possible. I also want to thank the folks in my lab who carry out the bulk of the work, and I'm humbled to be their leader of a passionate group of clinicians, scientists, and engineers. And um, thank you for your attention. I'll be happy to take any questions later. <laughs>